Hello everyone, it's Norma Woodcock here speaking to you from Perth in Western Australia. Thank you for joining me for this session on Lectio Divina, Divine Reading, a way of reading scripture that can change our lives for the best. It is an amazing and wonderful work of God in the Holy Scripture to speak to our hearts and to stir us for change and to bring about transformation and bring about blessings and peace and joy. So what I would like to do now is begin with the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So I would like now to begin by reading to you this scripture. It's taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. And as the first four disciples are called. Now he, Jesus, was standing one day by the lake of Gennesaret, with the crowd pressing round him, listening to the word of God, when he caught sight of two boats close to the bank. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, it was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and pay out your nets for a catch. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I will pay out the nets. And when they had done this, they netted such a huge number of fish that their nets began to tear. So they signaled to their companions in the other boat to come and help them. When these came, they filled the two boats to sinking point. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus, saying, Leave me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were completely overcome by the catch they had made. So also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were Simon's partners. But Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on it is men you will catch. Then bringing their boats back to land, they left everything and followed him. What scripture is that? Challenging, but what a powerful word. Why was this important for me? I don't know if any of you can relate to this, but I didn't like taking risks. I didn't like putting out into the deep because what would that mean for me? Because of my life story, I found it hard to trust anyone really. And I had to learn to trust Jesus. And so in this journey of fishing all night and catching nothing and hearing with wise discernment from wise people what my next step should be, I began to take out little by little into the deep and to put out my net for a catch. So I want to share a few things with you that may be helpful to you. In my ministry, I, I am not a learned person with a lot of theological knowledge, but I do have an experience of God. And out of that experience of God and experience of life, I share. My Archbishop many years ago, uh, Barry Hickey, um, he is now Archbishop Emeritus Barry Hickey and I'm privileged to have him as patron of my centre. He said, Norma, I think you should get involved in, prof in professional development days with teachers. And I didn't know what he meant. And I looked at him puzzled and I said, professional development days? And he said, spiritual professional development days. And so began my work with teachers and I put out into the deep and I asked for wise advice and I researched and I began to put together faith development for teachers in our Catholic education system here in Western Australia and I've been in many 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 schools through the years and then I began to teach on a Tuesday night at my local parish and it was it was great and there were people coming but it didn't seem to increase I didn't seem to be catching as many fish as I would like in other words I wanted to spread the word of God further and further and so I felt called to actually stop those nights not knowing what was ahead so it was a little by little trusting little by little going out a little bit a little bit at a time but I want to now go into my personal journey because I believe that sharing out of my personal journey and my marriage has helped a lot of people you know many many years ago I had my conversion 40 years ago and I was so full of love and joy, 
with Jesus loving me into life and my prayer time with Jesus was wonderful and I wanted to show Jesus how much I loved my husband and so I asked my husband one day, some of you are going to laugh, I mean I was a really good housewife, everything's folded neatly in all the cupboards and the meals were cooked and the house was tidy and I was a, I think I was a good housewife. And I expected him, when I asked this question, to actually affirm me and love me and bless me. So I said, how can I show you that I love you? How, how can I show you that I love you? And do you know what he said? Stop nagging. Well, I was a bit shattered because I was feeling quite a holy lady. And the Holy Spirit brought me down to, the, to you know, where it really is at. So I had to stop the shallow water thinking. I had to stop the shallow water behavior and I had to start to learn to stop nagging. Have I completely succeeded? I don't think I have, but I am a lot further along the way. And, you know, my husband and I now, we understand each other. If I feel I'm nagging, I, I can say sorry and, and we can move on. And so I want to just Quote something from Albert Einstein before I lead you into this uh, meditation. He says, in every crisis lies great opportunity. And this time of COVID is a time of great crisis and a time of great opportunity. He says, let's not pretend that things will change if we keep doing the same things. And now it's your turn. So I would like to now read the scripture twice. Luke 5, verses 1 to 11. Now he was standing one day by the lake of Gennesaret with the crowd pressing round him, listening to the word of God. When he caught sight of two boats close to the bank, the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats it was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and pay out your nets for a catch. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I will pay out the nets. And when they had done this, they netted such a huge number of fish that their nets began to tear. So they signaled to their companions in the other boat to come and help them. When these came, they filled the two boats to sinking point. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus, saying, Leave me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were completely overcome by the catch they had made. So also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were Simon's partners. But Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, it is men you will catch. Then bringing their boats back to land, they left everything and followed him. And now, I just want to lead you in some awareness exercises. Just be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of the sounds around you. Maybe the clock ticking, sound of traffic outside the window. Listen to the sounds, identify them, name them in your head. Take note of your breathing as you breathe in and out through your nostrils. 
feeling your breath warm at the tips of your nostrils as you breathe out. Feel your clothing where it touches your body, waistband around your waist, collar around your neck, shoes on your feet. One of these may work better for you than the others. Stay with the one that works the best. Surroundings, the sounds, your breathing, your clothing. Feel the stillness within and without. And now I invite you to place yourself in this scene. You may want to close your eyes, you don't have to. Perhaps you're sitting now in this boat next to Jesus. He turns and looks at you and smiles. He tells Peter to put out into the deep and he will catch fish. And Jesus turns to you and says, will you trust me? Will you let go of what you know? And will you let me lead you deeper into my love and my purpose for your life? And now Peter has said, I've fished all night, haven't caught anything. And you might say the same to Jesus. He says two words, trust me. And now you watch as Peter has thrown out the nets and there are fish jumping everywhere. The fish, all different colors, the nets are about to tear. You see Peter beckoning his companions on the shore to come in their boat. You see them come and they fill the boats to overflowing. Jesus looks at you and he says, your boats will overflow too. With my grace, my favor, my peace, my joy, my purpose for you. Peter is so overcome by this catch that he falls at the knees of Jesus. I wonder if you would like to fall on your knees, at your knees right in front of Jesus. Can you fall on your knees and look at him and say, Lord, I'm sinful. Maybe you need to depart from me. But Jesus is looking at you and he says, I have chosen you. From now on, there will be fish. And now the boats come into land and everyone gets out of the boat. Jesus is starting to walk now and he turns around and he waits for you to catch up with him. And he says, will you follow me? And if you have said yes, walk with him into your good future. And now because we need to finish the meditation, though you can come back whenever you want to, be aware of your surroundings, the sounds, your breathing, your clothing where it touches your body. Be aware of this picture now on your device, your television, my voice, and let yourself come to this present moment. You know, this is a useless exercise unless we take this message and apply it to our lives. How did I apply this message to my life? Oh my goodness, what an ongoing journey it has been for me. And this is my story and you will have your story, but can I tell you that as I nagged less, as I chose to love more, my ministry increased. I was able to touch more people, 
create more avenues, but they have gone hand in hand. Because you see, this I know with all my heart after 40 years of following Jesus, he is very interested in how we treat people. And so the journey for me is an ongoing journey. I wasn't catching any fish before, but now I'm catching fish. The deep water stretched me and still does at times, but I've learned to trust him more. I can take more risks because I'm growing in trust and it's the same for you. Sometimes it is difficult for us in the life that we live to learn to trust this amazing Jesus who is the Son of God, fully human, fully divine, but it's through his power and his love that we can overcome everything in the journey that tries to hinder us. I want to come back to Albert Einstein's quote, in every crisis lies great opportunity. And I believe COVID-19 is a great crisis that can provide all of us with great opportunity to grow, to become, to be renewed, to be resurrected in different parts of our lives. But this is important. He says, let's not pretend that things will change if we keep doing the same things. So here's a challenging word now. Some people may really receive this if I'm speaking to you. What do you need to change? What do you need to give up? What risk do you need to take? Get wise advice before you do it. But particularly in your private life that underpins your employment life, your ministry life, your church life, where do you need to change? And I'm going to add to what I used to do. I would nag, but sometimes I'd have a harsh voice and I needed to develop a gentle voice and I'm speaking to someone now. Let God gentle you. Let God soften you. Let God do a great work in you, but it begins by you choosing to do things differently. I'd like you to join me now in a final prayer. So Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, I come before you with these people gathered here and I'm asking for an outpouring of grace now in an ongoing way as they journey into the future you have planned for them. And that grace will help them to choose your way, your path, your truth, your loving beyond anything else. And I believe you will do that and give them everything they need to fulfill their application of this message. In your precious name, Jesus, I pray. So I'd like to finish now this session of Lectio Domina in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I would like to say thank you so much for joining me. I hope you'll join me again for the next session. I am privileged to present to you on Lectio Divina. God bless you. Thank you for listening.